Hello, my name is John Sundquist. Um, I uh, live in Eugene. I, use, I have been a forestry contractor in the past, and I spent uh, many years, uh, even 40 years ago, in this area. Um, some of the uh, uh, times when I was uh, doing reforestation contracting, um, I got to see firsthand the effects of pesticides on different people, and they affected different people in different ways. Some of them would fall on the ground, bleeding from every hole as soon as they got out of the crummy. Others were able to push through the so uh, silken brush for years, and, and without showing uh, any, and other people accumulated problems that showed up later in their lives. Uh, these things affect pe different people in different ways, and, um, and uh, I would like to see the synergy, the accumulation, and the fact that the EPA has uh, rescinded dangerous chemicals in the past be brought into the into the context here. Um, and I think that if we uh, look at the way uh, this area has been uh, operations, forestry operations have uh, uh, continued here in the last few years, it's been under a microscope. The Board of Forestry has been visiting here. Uh, we can have to assume there were no label violations and, and that all the applications of herbicides were um, legal. And yet we have people who were contaminated. I mean, this occurred, this occurred in, in spite of all the best, that we can assume, <laughs> efforts of, uh, of the industry to protect the people. And I think it points out the fact that the, that the efforts have failed. The Oregon Department of, of Ag Agriculture should not be in the situation where both promotes the use of pesticides yeah. and regulates yeah. them. Yeah. And, 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 and in the form of a question, I would put that to, um, uh, let's see, do you, uh, does this, the members of this committee, uh, believe that um, health and environmental protection should be reinstated as priorities in the Oregon Forest Practices Act. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the question is uh, reinstated. I don't believe they were ever instated in the Forest Practices Act. There's the only case where we have a nexus for public safety is landslides in public safety. And so at one time prior to my arrival at ODF, there was some buffer around houses for 245T. And the reason that was removed was when they redid the chemical rules, it turned out we did not have the authority to do that. So um, we wouldn't read and say it should it be in there in terms of public health and safety? Um, I, you know, I'm, I don't think so. I don't think we'd do a good job at it. I mean, if you want, if you, I think one of the questions here really is about risk and acceptable risk. And that's a policy social choice. It's not something that the Forest Practice Act is intended to deal with. The Forest Practice Act is intended to deal with a narrow range of things in terms of protecting resources. I mean, there are real fundamental policy questions you're raising at both the local, state, and national level. And so the, the question what you're asking me as a bureaucrat, which it shouldn't matter, um, what I think about what the policy should be, I try to implement the policy. So I think that's a question that you need to answer. And if you think it's yes, then take the steps you need to change the policy or change the Forest Practice Act. Um, but I don't think it's the right vehicle. I think there's other vehicles that you, if you want to change the way we do acceptable risk, then we need to talk about that as a public policy. And that's kind of fundamentally underlying this, is a disagreement. You, uh, I've heard a number of you say, no chemicals whatsoever. Right. And exactly. the national policy doesn't state that. The national what about policy. chemical trespass? Chemical trespass is currently against the law. But it's never enforced. Well, Who's going to get arrested? Who's going to get fined? Send my errand. So, um, go ahead, sorry. Well, if, so the, the question is, is how do you enforce trespass? Yeah. Now, and normally you'd call the sheriff if someone trespassed 
You're right. If they came onto your property, you would call the sheriff. The challenge we have, I think, with a lot of this stuff, and I'm hoping that this investigation will get its stuff, is where is it coming from? Now, um, we know where it's spreading from. We know where it's spreading from. Well, there's lots of spraying going on in forest land. Some area, and I talked to some citizens who believe that it's volatilization. So it's all aerial spray and ground spray. Okay? So I don't know exactly where it's coming from, and that's going to be one of the challenges with, with trespassing land use. So there's a number of issues here. Um, so uh, these are very much very important policy issues, and some of them I think need to get to the legislature if you really want to cause change at the state level. And I know that may not be satisfactory, but, but we need your support. But you can help recommend the legislature, right? We need your support. Yeah, quit using they're, chemicals. They're asking the legislature Tell them you don't to want them. adapt to this. These are conditions on the ground, measured on the ground. People are being poisoned. And every other organism in this watershed we should expect is equally poisoned, right? Isn't that, isn't, I mean, you don't want to... Um, to, to prioritize human and, and environmental health protections as your recommendation, but when is it going to happen? I can't can't you can't you start the the ball going? Well, I think we are trying to start the ball going. You're passing it off onto us, is what you're doing. You just said yeah. it's our job to take it. Yeah. 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 Clearly, you've got a reaction to, to the, the limitations that, that Peter's trying to describe to you. And, um, and I, think, I think what he's basically saying is that there are limits to the authorities that we have, and there are limits to the authorities that we can try to acquire. The, the mechanism that we're working on right now, this exposure investigation, is, we, we've heard you, you know, is very important to you, and if we can get the lift that we're looking for here, it may be, we may be able to affect some change. That's, that's what we're looking for. Can I say something on this, Jim? Yeah, I think uh, Changing policy is, is difficult, and it's true that when there's, there's for every uh, rulemaking body in Oregon, there's usually some kind of board or something, and there's a public process, and everybody's going to get to go to that board and tell them why they think the rule should be this way or that way. And so what, what is really important in that process is good, scientifically defensible data that can be backed up. And I think if, if rules are going to be changed with regard to the use of forest pesticides, it's going to be based upon sound scientific information that documents the problems that are currently there from the use of those pesticides. Mm -hmm. So I think what, what we're trying to do here is we're not trying to, we we're, agno we're agnostic, we, we don't, we, don't, we can't take a position as scientists whether or not this is good or this is bad. Our position is to collect data that will make good policy decisions in the long run. That data has to be very objective, it has to be re reproducible, but that's the kind of information that is necessary to change policy. Emotional, please, I understand, I'm not going to try to convince any one of you that you're wrong because I don't know that you're wrong. And I know that you live here and I accept your experience. But I do know in terms of the policy making, what's most effective in terms of changing those policies is good, sound, scientific information that, that can't be disproved in front of a rulemaking body, such as the Board of Forestry, the Environmental Quality Commission, or any of these, because there's going to be battling science in those situations. In many cases, it's the best science that's going to prevail in those I'd situations. I'd like to point out that the reason we're having this meeting is because some private citizens took some initiative and submitted some urine for sample. And that makes, that's the point I guess I'm trying to make. So that's the way to go. And like Dan said earlier, we will continue to test. And we really hope that you guys come up with the funding. And maybe if there's somebody like the governor in Oregon that would be able to allocate more money, if you told us, then we could be pressuring them to give more funding to the study. So let us know if there's someone like that, like the governor that might be able to top up more bucks. 